This is the Martin Farm Harvest Festival. The festival is put on strictly by the volunteers. It is, one, it is our only annual fundraiser for the volunteers for the Nature Center. You were my sunshine. A lot of the things that you see out here are people that actually love the crafts that they do and it's nice to be able to bring those crafts back to the public so they can see what life was like on a farm in Texas. The time frame that we're looking at is 1890 to 1910. Well, to bring back uh, the uh, feeling of what life was like back then, to know how far we've come, to reconnect people with the f nature, and because the farmer back then was connected to his his uh, surroundings, and we like to show people it's not all grocery store uh, commodities. You have to actually plant things and grow them, and and uh, this is what it's all about. If you just put them together without spinning up, then the rope would be loose and it would unravel. And rope making through history has been extremely important. You look at the, all the sailing ships, everything was tied together with rope. Uh, people use rope to rope cattle. Uh, and so, but all had to be made by hand. We didn't have machines back then. And so we're teaching the kids how it was done by hand before the, mach the machines came out. how much more time consuming perhaps some tasks were, how much more precious some things were because you had actually put so much time and effort into them. A hoe cake is basically a cornmeal pancake. You mix the bacon fat, lard, with hot water, a little salt, and when that's melted, you would add the cornmeal, stir it up, and the corn will get softened by the warm water. And then basically you put a little lard on your hoe, which you have cleaned off from using it in the field, and put your mixture on there, make yourself a little cornmeal pancake. And instead of coming all the way back to the farmhouse, they would make up their mixture, make some coffee, have a break, a breakfast, after they'd been working for quite a while. They usually went to about seventh or eighth grade. And we have the Middle Bayou School, which originally would have been on this site in 1890. On this property, we did have a school called the Middle Bayou School. So this is an actual school that would have been here. It was very different. Uh, you didn't have to go to school. It was not a requirement. You would go to school if your parents didn't need you on the farm at the time. And most of the time it was in the winter time. Children were uh, usually in school from ages 8 through 17, but they didn't come every day. And the teacher taught whoever came in the building. The building was usually just a one room. Maybe they would use uh, the church, and sometimes they have a building built for themselves. And it would be wide open. They would have a desk in there, uh, ranging from the smallest to the tallest. And they would have they would have to bring all their supplies with them. It was a slower type of world back then. No electronics and uh, no TVs, no lights. You had to have candles and washing clothes with a scrub board and. You know, playing simple games like this, cupcake walk and pie eating, that's what we did for entertainment. Parents, do you have your cameras ready? Ready? Set? No. Go. Get those pictures, parents. Who got the, let me see. Oh, uh, our winner is right here, nothing on the plate. We would like the people to understand how important Armin Bayou is. It is one of the big draws. A lot of people have lived in the area and they drive by here all the time and they've never come to visit. And this gives them a chance to come and see what we have. It's very relaxing. I always calm down if I'm upset or simply you don't even realize that you're tense and you come out here, walk down the boardwalk, walk across the farm site and you feel good. <laughs>